Hi guys, I'm Nicole Harry DIY and today we're going to be talking about circular saws. Now, if you don't know who I am, welcome. This is my channel, Nicole Herrick DIY. I do all sorts of tips on absolutely everything from building, making, creating, absolutely anything. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe and then introduce yourself down below. I would love to get to know all of uh, the people who subscribe to my channel and hey, if you've got one as well, let me know what your channel is and I might give it a follow. So I am putting together a series on lots of different power tools to help people that have no experience with power tools whatsoever. doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, these videos are just to give you an overview of how to use the tools what you can do with them and how to be safe using them. And if there is a power tool that I haven't yet done on my channel and you would like to know how to use it, hit me up, drop a comment below and you never know, I might do that power tool for you. I hope to get through all of them. I do own a heck of a lot of power tools already, but if there's something that I don't have and you're all encouraging me to go buy it, then I mean, you know, I, I'll just have to go buy it. <laughs> I have a little bit of a tool obsession, I must admit, but you know what, if you're watching this video, then you're about to have a tool obsession as well. All right, let's get started. So I've got two circular saws in my kit. The first one I got many years ago is just this corded Azito Electric. It is fairly small in the range of sort of circular saws. Um, but it is still a little bit heavy for me as a chick. Obviously we have a little bit less sort of upper body strength than men. So it is a little bit heavy, but I still have always found it really good. Um, it has a grip on the front here, so that helps to balance the weight distribution as you're sort of holding it and pushing along. Um, so I wanted to upgrade a lot of my tools to battery operated. So I got this one a couple of years ago. So this is a battery operated Azito saw. Um, and it is so nice and light and small. You can see the difference between the blade sizes here. Um, so it's a much smaller blade. Um, it's an all plastic body, but it's really um, sort of good quality and durable. Um, Azito also has like a five year warranty so as much as a lot of people say you know don't buy azito it's cheap i actually find that none of my azito tools have ever given me any issues over the many years that i've owned them switching to having a battery operated circular saw was such a game changer for me because i don't have a workshop or a garage that i can actually do all my DIY stuff in so I found it really hard each time that I was doing work either in my backyard or in my front yard I had to get out the huge massive extension cord plug it in drag all my tools outside plug them in and it was just it was stopping me from getting like little DIY tasks done every weekend because if it was just like one little cut that I wanted to make it was just uh, it was just too much effort so getting battery operated things like saws has just changed my life like i can literally just pick it up chuck a battery on and go cut whatever i need to dust it off put it back on the shelf easy um so with the batteries it does make it heavier obviously now one thing that maybe not everyone knows is that if you use a larger amp hour battery, it will give you a little bit more power on whatever tool you're using. You can still use a smaller battery, which is gonna be much lighter, um, but it won't have quite as much power. But if you're just cutting plywood or something like that, you don't need a huge amount of power. Also, talking about power. So there is always, well, for me in this tool range, there is a difference between a battery operated and a corded or electric operated. Um, so you're always gonna get much better power for cutting through anything with a corded. You are a little bit limited as to what you can sort of cut with a battery operated. So things like hardwood, you will struggle a little bit with. It, it's only like a few things that I've found that I haven't been able to cut with this one um, and I've just preferred to use this one. So my initial thought was switching everything over to battery in my power tool kit was going to be the way to go but I actually didn't want to get rid of this one 
um, because I really needed it for those bigger jobs where I'm cutting hardwood and lots of it. So I'm very happy to have both in my collection. All right, let's have a look at the way that you change the settings on both of these tools. So with all circular saws, you're going to be able to change the depth of your blade. So this is your blade here. And what you're actually changing is this piece rather than sort of bringing the blade up and down, you move this up and down. So on this particular one, all you need to do is release this lever go like that and make sure you're always unplugged or have no batteries in whenever you're changing adjusting the settings on any of your power tools all right so if I look here now that I've got my lever released I can maneuver this so you want to make sure that your blade depth is just like a few mil deeper than the piece of wood you're cutting this is so that you reduce friction um, and stop the wood from burning so if I was to use my blade up all the way to cut like a really thin piece of plywood, it's going to start burning that edge. For plywood, I would bring it down to something like here, depending on how many mil, or if I'm cutting a nice big chunk of wood, I can bring it up further. Choose your depth and then you can simply lock it into place. Okay. Now with this one, we can also do... 45 degree cuts this way or this way. Uh, up here is where I change that. So all I need to do is unscrew this. Then again, it's this part that's moving, not the actual blade. You can see the different degrees. So not degrees down here, all the way up to 45 degrees. Bring that up to 45. Again, tighten that up. And then you can see that that gives you a beveled cut. Now that's if you're wanting to do like a beveled cut in the wood, but if you just want to do a 45 degree across, then I'm going to show you later what you use to do that quick and easy. These types of circular saws also come with a straight edge guide, and this helps you cut along a piece of um, board and keep it really nice and straight. So the way that these work is it just slides in and you figure out where it needs to be to make your cut and then tighten it down and you'll also notice just here we have 0 degrees and 45 degrees so these are some little guides for when you're cutting to follow along a line that you have drawn so if you're just doing a straight cut you'll put your line just in here and you'll need to figure out which side of the line you're wanting to cut on okay so because the blade is like about two mil thickness, you need to take that into account whenever you're making a cut. And then if you're doing the beveled cut, then it'll show you where to follow the line for that 45 degree beveled cut. So you've seen me use this lever a few times within the video already. So this just brings up your guide. Sometimes when you wanna do a plunge cut, so if you wanna start more in the middle of a piece of timber, the it will start hitting the guard first if you start on the edge of a piece of timber it's going to naturally push this guide along and out of the road for you but if you do want to start on the middle of a piece of timber then you need to manually lift this and do a plunge cut so i'll show you a plunge cut in a minute so you can understand what i mean but basically all you need to do for a plunge cut is start up high make sure that you don't have any fingers in the road lift up your guard and then gently let it down and then you can let go of that and then push along all right let's talk about our battery operated one so very much the exact same deal you can see here my blade guard comes up with the same kind of lever let's take the battery out before we do any adjustments all right so to change the depth of the blade on this particular one, there is just a little latch right here. Okay, and then that allows us to move this up and down. And I generally lay it on its side, lift up the blade guide, and then move it to where I need it to be. Um, I'm gonna be cutting some thin stuff in a moment, so I'm just gonna get it nice and thin and put my latch back up. And then if you wanna do the 45 degree cuts, again, it's over here. So we just need to release that and you can see that that 
gives us any angle between naught and 45 degrees to do like a beveled side cut. I'm going to keep that on naught. And again, if you want to put an edge guide in, you can actually put it in this way or you can put it in this way. It doesn't matter. Let's put it in this way for this particular one. Okay, and we just tighten that down wherever we need it. We've also got our little guides here as well. So for naught degrees, and then we've got a bit of a wider one on this particular one for your 45. That allows you to sort of figure it out if you're not quite using a 45 degree beveled cut, beveled side cut. Um, this also comes with a little Allen key here, and that's for changing the blade whenever you need to. All right, let's pop a battery on. And I'm just going to show you how to start this nice and close. So on most circular saws, you're going to have a safety switch. So you need to push the safety switch in first, um, which you can actually do from either side. It has one on this side, or you can push it with your thumb. So I'm going to be pushing this with my thumb and then using my index finger to squeeze the trigger. And then you can just let that off. And as soon as you let go, it will go off. Now the safety switch on this one is just here by your thumb. So you need to hold in the safety switch and then pull the trigger to get this started. And then once you've got the trigger fully in, you can let go of the safety switch. So push it in and then pull our trigger and then you can let go. And you can see that that stays in. Now let's talk about a few things that you will probably need when you're using a circular saw. So when you buy a circular saw, don't just buy a circular saw. Grab a few extra accessories to make your circular sawing super easy. So my favorite accessory of using a circular saw is the speed square. Um, so these are, this one cost me 15 Australian dollars. So super cheap. I grabbed it on eBay. I will pop a link below. So anytime you want to do just a simple straight cross cut, you line it up on your edge like this. You can see it has a T right here to grip that right onto your edge. Then you can simply line up where your line that you've drawn is on the zero notch there and then zoom across and it'll give you a beautiful straight cut. Likewise, if you wanna do a 45 degree cut, simply flip it around and then you can do a 45 degree cut this way. Now you will probably with any 45 degree cut need to also lift the lever a little, sorry, lift the safety lever a little bit before you get going, just so that you can get sort of that first little bit done nice and straight. The next thing that I use all the time with my circular saws is clamps. So I've got some, I think these are 40, 45 centimeter clamps. So meaning it's 45 centimeters from here to here. So these clamps work by a simple ratchet system. So you use the button back here to get it roughly to the right size of the timber that you're clamping, and then you can ratchet it closer. Super simple, really quick. They've got soft foam pads or rubbery foam pads on it so that you won't damage your timber. Now I use these to clamp on a straight edge. Now a straight edge might just be a really nice straight piece of timber. Keep in mind though, it has to be a straight piece of timber if you want a really straight cut. Sometimes not all factory cut pieces of timber are actually straight. Another absolute essential is to wear your safety glasses uh, and obviously ones that aren't covered in spray paint from your last DIY video. Yeah need to grab a new pair of those and if you're working with MDF you must wear a respirator because the particles going into your lungs from that are very fine and it will cause you damage use a respirator all right let's do a quick cross cut first so let's take off our battery and we're going to test and see if our blade is deep enough nope definitely not deep enough I'm going to release that Give myself a bit more, a couple of mil deeper, that is fine. Clip that back in and then I can click my battery on. All right, I'm going to use my speed square for this one because it's a quick and simple cut. Um, now, if you do want to draw your line first, so you know where you're wanting to cut, you can use your speed square. Okay, 
and then we're going to line up our little zero and I'm going to put it on the outside edge. So this is the piece I'm wanting to cut off and get rid of. So I'm going to bring my bead square along, slide until I get just to the outside of that line. I'm going to hold in my safety switch and then pull my trigger. And then you can see here that it's actually given me a little bit extra. So I know that I can actually put that line right in the middle of my naught degrees. Let's do that. Here we go. And then you can sneak up a little bit closer on the line if you need to. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of um, sort of figuring out whereabouts on my naught degrees sort of gap here is it going to give me the exact right cut it does vary a little bit for every kind of saw and it also varies on depending on what blade width you have in here all right let's do a 45 degree cut so i'm going to flip this over and i might actually do the 45 cut this way so let's draw ourselves a little line let's spin this a little bit and then I'm going to get my I'm going to make sure I'm pushing this right against that timber, okay? Okay, and then we have a nice 45 degree cut. You can also get uh, different angled speed squares as well. All right, that's how we do those. Let's do a quick bevel cut. All right, so let's take our battery out and we're gonna adjust our bevel switch. So we untighten that, gonna bring it all the way around to the 45. And I wanna show you. So you can see there is a little line right here that needs to line up perfectly with that 45 and it will usually kind of click when it gets right on there but this particular one doesn't wrong way push that nice and tight okay now we can see that the bevel is going to be this way okay this is going to bevel inwards like this okay now if you wanted to bevel the other way you would flip it over the other way. All right. So now I'm still going to use my speed square. And you can see here, here is my 45 guideline. And I'm just going to be doing it on the end. So I'm not going to draw myself a line, but let's cut. There's my 45 right there. There's a good lesson. Okay, when you're cutting a 45, you're gonna need a little bit longer blade length. So you can see that hasn't quite gone all the way through. So I'm gonna take my battery off and I'm gonna give myself just a little bit more blade room. There we go, just a couple of mil. All right, let's do a fresh cut. Our 45 degree mitre cut. Um, another thing that I use really often is just a couple of scrap pieces of timber to lift my work off the ground or off the bench. So here is a couple of scrap pieces. Okay, I'm gonna pop that there. I'm gonna do a cut through here. I'm gonna use my straight edge here. But before we clamp down our straight edge, we're just going to measure and mark a nice straight line. Now, you want to always measure off a very straight edge. If you've got sort of a wobbly all over the place edge, then measuring in and marking and then drawing a line, it's not going to guarantee to be straight. So use a factory edge if possible. They're generally the straightest. Always mark with three dots at least. Um, and then you can use your speed square to start it off and then just a straight edge to run it all the way along. 
All right, let's do a long cut. Okay, so option one is if I have a really straight factory edge that I know is perfectly straight on here, then that's when I can use my edge guide. So I would slide my edge guide in from whichever end it needs to go in to work for whatever you're working with. So I would simply put my zero on my line, bring this up to the side, tighten it down, and then I would pull my trigger and go all the way along. And that will keep that really nice and straight. It will keep it as straight as this edge is. But because this particular piece, this is not a factory edge, this is one that I cut. So I'm not convinced that this is 100% going to be perfectly straight. So instead, I'm going to clamp on a straight edge that I know is straight. All right, so straight edges, you can obviously just use a piece of timber that you know is reasonably straight. Factory edges do tend to be reasonably straight. Um, pieces of something like this, um, aluminium, are really nice and strong in this direction, so they won't flex as you're pushing against it. And I also use uh, vertical blind aluminium strips. So I've got a few of those laying around in different sizes and they're really handy for doing really long sheets. So I need it obviously as long as my timber. So I'm going to use this straight edge. I'm going to grab my F clamps, pop these on in the right spot. So I'm going to determine my right spot by going there at this end. And I'm going to put the shorter end of this underneath. And I'm going to put it right on the back edge here. Okay. And then let's swing her around. And we want to make sure we are pushing against this piece of material. So I'm gonna be putting my hand right in the middle here and I'm going to be pushing my saw against this piece of material to try and keep it as straight as possible. So let's go. Safety switch in, trigger pull. So there we go, that has given me a nice straight line right on my line. Actually, it's about a mil off, but you know, I'm okay with a mill this time. <laughs> All right, to release these clamps, push down on the little black button and they'll release easily. Now, I just forgot a really good tip when you're cutting plywood. So sometimes when you're cutting plywood, you do get a little bit of chip out along the edge. Um, so what you can do is cut it from the underside. So you can see on this one that the underside of this cut is really nice and smooth and there's barely any chip out. There is stump, some. But what I like to do is use some painter's tape. So by using painter's tape, put it along there first and then draw your line. And then that will actually minimize any chip out of the wood. So another great tip is to use this foam board. So it's some of, sometimes it's insulation board or it might be called... Um, some kind of foam core, but this is just what it is. It's like about, it's less than ten dollars at the um, hardware store. Have a look in the insulation section; you will find it. You can make loads and loads of cuts on top of this. The blade can cut into here; it's not going to damage the blade. Okay, so you can see it's not one million percent perfect, but there is a lot less chip out in that edge. Okay, now let's do a plunge cut. All right, so I've got a piece here and I wanna start the cut from about here. I've drawn a line here, but I'm gonna cut it from about here. Now you need kind of two hands on your saw to be able to do this. So um, if you've got it clamped down, all good. I'm not clamping this one down. So I'm just gonna use my foot so that I've got two spare hands. Now what I wanna do is put the tip of the blade down okay we're going to put the line on our naught degrees so that we know exactly 
where we're meant to be. And let's pretend that I've got this all nice and straight. I'm going to slide this along and then look at where my blade is actually going. Okay. I'm going to lift up the guide here, make sure that's out of the road. And I'm just going to judge roughly where I think I need to start, where the back of the blade will actually land in. I'm going to push my safety button, trigger, and then slowly come down. There we go. I've started just that little bit further in, and that is a plunge cut. And last but not least, make sure you always give your tools a good brush over. Always take the battery out, grab a dust brush, or you can use a uh, leaf blower. They're pretty good as well. A paintbrush, just whatever you've got handy. And going like this tends to get a lot of it off. Pop it back in your cupboard and cut whatever you want to cut whenever you want to cut thanks for watching guys if you haven't already subscribed don't forget hit subscribe and click the notification bell and that will tell you whenever i upload a brand new video i try and upload every one to two weeks and it's always something different and hopefully entertaining thanks for watching guys Amen.